Desert grasshoppers are mostly living alone, each leading its own way of life. As the desert environment dries up and leaves smaller areas of greens, grasshoppers look for food and slowly start moving from their place. This eventually brings all grasshoppers closer together. They see and smell one another and touch and rub one another's hind legs. This mechanical tickling affects a couple of nerves in the body. Within few hours of crowding, a boost of neurochemical called serotonin in the nervous system creates sudden behavioral changes, such as rapid movements, crowding, increased appetite. Serotonin not only creates behavioral change, but also physical appearance. Body color changes from a green or brown to a vivid yellow and black. Their body size is getting smaller with newly developed strong muscle. Brain grows larger. The wings become longer and stronger for long travel to search food legs and horns shrink shorter. Finally harmless little green grasshoppers turn into a morphed grasshoppers called locust. When the group's density increased, the bugs fell into an orderly line and began to follow the same direction. This group formation called swarm. Serotonin exists in all animals. Serotonin plays an important role to boost moods in humans. It is a happy harmon. It controls mood, memory, sleep, cognition. If serotonin level low, then it creates depression. Scientists did some experiment with grasshoppers using serotonin. They injected a little serotonin into the locusts. It induces swarming behavior even without that hind leg's physical stimulation. Further scientists started adding some chemicals that blocked the production of serotonin. Then the crowding behavior was significantly less. So, serotonin is the nature's way of giving energy and swarming behavior to grasshoppers to become locusts. There are thousands of grasshopper species, but only 22 can be morphed to locusts. Desert locust is the one. All locusts are grasshoppers, but not all grasshoppers are locusts. Climate change will likely make conditions even more favorable for swarms. The western side of the Indian Ocean was unusually warm as compared to the eastern side. So a lot of evaporation happening over there, which turned into a rainfall in East Africa, Yemen and India, some of the heaviest in two decades. When the waters receded, there was a surge in lush greenery. This creates favorable environment for grasshoppers. Dormant locust eggs start hatching, some eggs that were laid years ago. Then the grasshoppers grow, ate, gathered, mated, and laid eggs. Gradually populations of grasshoppers explode. Locusts are prodigious flyers. Depending upon the wind speed, they can travel up to 150 kilometers in a day. They can stay in their air for long periods of time. For example, locusts regularly cross the Red Sea, a distance of 300 kilometers. As well, traveled from West Africa to the Caribbean, a distance of 5,000 kilometers in about 10 days in 1988. Experts believe the massive locust attack because of climate change. So these unusual winds, cyclones, extreme weather is helping these pests breed fast and migrate. Locusts have entered India after traveling from Africa through Yemen, Iran and Pakistan. Usually, locusts arrive in India during the monsoon months, between July and October. However, this year, the first reported sighting dates as early as April 11. Reason behind increased breeding of locusts this year due to the Indian Ocean temperature changes, increased numbers on abnormal rains and cyclones. So, increasing the number of insects over the Arabian desert roughly 8,000-fold. This year's attack has been the worst in three decades. Scientists predict that the disaster will enhance as we enter monsoon season. So, another swarm of locusts arriving in India by July. Grasshoppers live long before dinosaurs about 300 million years ago. Not new to the world. Historically, the desert locust has always been a major threat to human well-beings. Locusts do not cause direct harm to humans, such as by transmitting diseases or stinging. Locusts are voracious eaters. The locust mouthparts are directed downward for biting and chewing the leaves. Mandibles, that is jaws operate from side to side. They have overlapping edges that cut like scissors and molar surfaces for grinding or crushing.
Locust swarm do cause damage by devouring the leaves, flowers, fruits, seeds, bark and growing points, and also by breaking down trees because of their weight when they calm down in plenty. Locust also consumes cattle's food. It creates meals insecurity and malnutrition. It is reducing the milk quality produced by the cattle. The locusts attack golf course as well. Locust swarms threat to aircraft during landing and takeoff phase. They are millimeters in size but millions in numbers. So, locusts considered as the most destructive migratory pests in the world. Locust found in Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. They inhabit some 60 countries and can cover one-fifth of Earth's land surface. An adult desert locust can consume food roughly their own weight, which is roughly about 2 grams, every single day. One square kilometer of a locust swarm of 40 million can eat as much food as 35,000 humans' food intake per day. This invasion could push hundreds of thousands of people to the brink of starvation. In favorable conditions, a locust swarm can cover an area from less than one square kilometer to several hundred square kilometers. They can destroy crops and cause major agricultural damage, which can lead to famine and starvation. To control locust swarm, we need to understand their anatomy and behavior. Adult male and female locusts are distinguished by the shape of the tip of the abdomen. The end of the abdomen of the male locust is rounded, but for female appears like upper and lower jaws. That is called ovipositor. Females locusts bit longer than male. When grasshoppers mate, male will climb on top of the females to deposit their sperm, so the females can lay eggs. If you see a smaller grasshopper on top of a larger grasshopper, the smaller one is likely a male. Female locusts may crowd together and lay large numbers of eggs in a patch of soil suitable for egg laying. The female drills six inches deep hole into the soil ground using the ovipositor at the tip of the abdomen. Then it lays a pot of eggs around 80 to 150 eggs, which is sealed with froth. The froth helps to protect the eggs. The eggs are buried below the surface. Females can lay at least three times in their lifetime. Female locusts will often make test drill holes in the soil without laying any eggs. If suitable soil surface found then it will drill and lay eggs. These areas are referred to as egg beds. A frothy plug at the entrance to the egg bed is one indication that it is not a test drill. After the egg hatches, they become adult in 30 days depending on the temperature. A desert locust lives a total of about 3 to 5 months. New generation atlas 20 times larger than the previous one. In this way, desert locusts can increase its population size exponentially over successive generations. Locusts were born with fields of fresh, juicy plants like grasses and shrubs to nourish them. This is an important opportunity for preventing them from forming swarms. Since they don't yet have mature wings, they tend not to fly very far. Once the native vegetation is devoured, the locusts take flight and look for their next meal. Locusts having ears on the sides of the abdomen. Not on the side of their head. Locusts can distinguish different tones and direction of a sound source with tiny ears. Locusts make a chirping sound by running their hind legs against their wings. Male grasshoppers use sounds to call for mates. Females can hear the sound that males make and judge the relative size of the male using sounds. The male then listens for her response and due to his sensitive hearing, is able to pinpoint her location. Grasshoppers can leap up to 20 times the length of their bodies but can only fly for shorter distances. Locust hops are shorter than grasshoppers but use less energy to cover the same distance. As well, can fly very longer. To control locusts effectively, strategies should be applied from the beginning stages of the locust attack. Weather patterns and historical locust records help experts predict where swarms might form. Once identified, an area is sprayed with chemicals to kill locusts before they can gather. Young hoppers, which are wingless and unable to fly, move as a group on the ground. Spraying with insecticides at this stage is very effective and can greatly reduce numbers. But using pesticides wipe out other insects like honeybee, worms. 
Other way, we can use locust predators such as locust eating ducks, birds. You may think we can give serotonin and blocker. But to spray serotonin and blocking drugs on locust swarms, warn that such chemicals might have an adverse effect on other creatures, including humans. Scientists have been working on how to turn locusts into food for fish, poultry, farm animals and even humans. We can use mass trapping methods. As well, disrupt locusts mating with chemicals. Locusts cannot tolerate loud noises. So farmers are using novel techniques such as beating drums, use loudspeakers and revving tractors to scare away the swarms. Edible insects have always been a part of human diet in many countries. Locusts are high in protein, fatty acids and minerals such as zinc and iron. In many countries, desert locusts are collected using large nets. They are then stir-fried, roasted or boiled or dried to consume later. Locust flour can be used as energy bars, snacks and sandwiches. It can be used to improve the taste and nutritional content of any food. Hope this video very informative. Please leave your comment what you are thinking about locust and any effective way to control.